The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary John. Hello and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Mary John. And I'm Jim Allen. It's not every day you see dozens of tractors parading in front of the state capitol, but that's what happened recently when people from across the country came to Alabama for the Red Power Roundup. This is the largest showcase of international harvester products in the world. What do you get when you take U.S. veterans for a joy ride in the only American-made sports car on America's most iconic racetrack? You get Vets for Vets, a high-powered fundraiser for veterans groups. We want to honor the veterans that are here today and the ones that have sacrificed everything. Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants says a lack of space is no reason to not plant a garden. He'll show you how to make the most of the space you have a little later. But up first today, we'll meet an Alabama man with a knack for transforming almost anything he finds into art. What sustains us? Food, family, faith. Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources, clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. Our next story is about an artist, but what does that mean exactly? Art is one of those hard to define kind of words. Is it a painting, a sculpture, or is it just the imagination's way of getting out of your head for the world to see? Folks, no matter how you define it, Butch Anthony's creations might catch you off guard. But this East Alabama native has made quite a name for himself with art enthusiasts around the world. If I had to use one word to introduce you folks to Butch Anthony, Bones is probably the one I'd choose. While touring his Museum of Wonder that he built into his old family barn, just about every oddball curiosity I came across had something to do with Bones. It shouldn't come as a surprise then that a bone helped inspire the career of one of Alabama's best known artists. When I was about 14, I found a Mosasaurus, this big, 30-foot sea creature that swam about 65 million years ago in a creek down here. Some folks from Auburn came over and looked at it and told me what it was, and I put it in here on a little pedestal. People started coming around here, so all I had to look at was that, so I just started adding more stuff. What is it is a question I have to admit rattle around my big noggin as I peruse Bush's collection of creative taxidermy, paintings, arrowheads, and all manner of handcrafted curiosities. The art world loves its labels, but Butch Anthony is a master at avoiding them. Instead, he created his own. I just made up a word, call it intertwangalism. Inter means to mix, and twang is like a distinct way of speaking. Ism's a theory, so it's like a, my theory on mixing stuff up. As an artist, the name Butch Anthony probably rings more bells outside of his small town of Seal than it does with the locals. His particular flavor of art landed him a feature on the television program American Pickers, and it wasn't long before his family farm was getting a little crowded with visitors. Well, I doubt the locals failed to notice his new museum he built in response, probably the only one you'll ever get a chance to drive a car through. I took some shipping containers and cut holes in them, put glass in there, and you can just drive through. They ain't got to get out and walk in here. They can just drive through just like McDonald's. The art in Alabama, and really across the South, is, is unique in its storytelling. 
Um, you know, Butch's work in particular uh, is very humorous um, and very smart, and, and I think that people recognize the quality of that. Dothan's Wiregrass Museum of Art has featured Butch's work since the 1990s when they acquired a piece of his titled Mr. and Mrs. Cul-de-sac. In 2017, the museum hosted an exhibit of his work as part of an ongoing celebration of Alabama's bicentennial. We hosted an exhibition called Museum of Wonder, uh, which was a solo exhibition of his work, uh, where he actually came and he built a museum inside of the museum and recreated his uh, built environment that you see out in Seal. Right next door to Seal's popular Possum Trot auction house, Butch keeps a little gallery of his work. Tucked among the skeletons and assorted whimsical hijinks, I noticed he had painted the question, why? And some of you folks may be asking yourselves the same thing. Well, no one's ever confused Jim Allen for an art critic, but if you ask me, I'd say the better question is, well, why not? He really is himself, I think, a student. He's always learning about new things, but he's always kind of wanting to push the envelope and make something unique and, and make it his own as well. We never had any art when I was growing up. The only picture we had in our house was a pinky and blue boy. Every house in Alabama had that. My folks didn't know nothing about art. I saw, I just kind of made it up as I went along. It's fun, I like I do it every day. Get up in the morning and start making stuff. It's fun to me. If the strange world of Butch Anthony's art intrigues you, museumofwonder.com has all sorts of off-the-wall web wonders for you to gawk at or even buy. And while you're in SEAL, you can also stop at the Possum Trot auction. It was featured on the TV show American Pickers and very popular spot for the locals. And you might even see Butch there. Yeah, just look for his overalls. That's how you know. When we return, we'll see how Vets for Vets and Talladega Super Speedway provide a one-of-a-kind experience to honor our country's military. The versatile peanut, meat of the earth, friend of the soil, tasty, nutritious, packed with protein. And Alabama peanut farmers nourish some very special things, families, communities, and Alabama's economy. Peanuts. Good for you. Good for Alabama. Who drives your car? An athlete? A rocker? A dreamer? A survivor? A best friend. Alpha Insurance. As individual as you are. Ugly brush piles cluttering your property? Introducing the all-new DR Chippers, now starting at an unbelievably low price. Chew up big branches that come down in storms, and all the trimmings from your yard and garden. The new DR Chipper, now starting at just $699.99. For a free buyer's guide and DVD, call 1-800-422-0482. Special pricing and free shipping are now in effect. Online at drchipper.com. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes on to the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. One weekend every spring and fall, Talladega Super Speedway welcomes thousands of spectators for a heart-pounding, ear-deafening day of NASCAR racing. But on Memorial Day weekend, the track becomes a place to honor our nation's heroes while providing veterans a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And it's all thanks to the Vets for Vets organization. Poor vets. They're not the stock cars you'd expect to see lined up in pit row at Talladega Super Speedway. But for the past 10 years, Corvette enthusiasts have been starting their engines and revving up for a good cause. 
raising money to support veterans. The event is called Vets for Vets, and it's the brainchild of Mark Davis. Back in 2007, uh, with my wife and I bought an old 88 Corvette, and in 2008, early 2008, I was watching a news story about veterans that had come home, they'd been killed and what have you, and I just, I said, I gotta do something. I'm a veteran, I need to do something. And that he did. In a decade, Vets for Vets has raised nearly $400,000 by selling laps around the track. It's $100 for your first five laps and then $75 for each additional set. The event has caught on with Corvette clubs across the country, with participants from more than 15 states in 2018. But it's about a lot more than just driving fast on an iconic racetrack. Probably one of the neatest things is that half the people that come out here are generally veterans. They've served, even as far back as the Korean War. We've had World War II veterans come out here and run with us too. The young guys that come back, they don't want to get involved with us old guys through the American Legion or VFW. But guess what? We have fellowship with our young brothers and sisters that have gone to war that are coming out here today. Sorry. But that's the most important part. It is, right? it is. It's just, and it's the fellowship. You don't have to be a veteran to participate in Vets for Vets. By the same token, if you are a veteran, you don't have to have a Corvette. You can just show up and they'll put you in a car with a driver. You need to come down and experience this. It's wonderful. The drivers are great. I rode with Greg in a black Corvette and then I rode with a police officer in a Porsche and he was from Hoover. And what a great guy. This is what is America is all about. We have the greatest country in the world. We really do. And I fought for this country. I spent time in Vietnam with a lot of other vets. And the heroes are really their names on the wall. But this experience is for everybody. This is great. Funds raised from Vets for Vets go to support veterans organizations in the region, state, and nation, including the Alabama Veteran Group. Members of that organization cooked lunch for participants and kicked off the event with a ruck run around the track. After the run, it was time to get down to business with a few laps. The organizers of Vets for Vets were gracious enough to let me ride along. And folks, from the minute we got into that first curve until my driver, Greg, let off the accelerator, it was a thrilling, once-in-a-lifetime experience. And that's one of the reasons Hendrick Chevrolet in Hoover is proud to both sponsor and participate in Vets for Vets. This is fun. It's exhilarating. Uh, it's 2.66 miles around here. And uh, when you come down the straightaway, you kind of relax and you get your breath again. You go down the back straightaway where you can uh, accelerate a little bit. And the, uh, the adrenaline gets going and it makes you appreciate the people that are driving 200 miles an hour in sports car, I mean in NASCAR side by side, two, three inches apart. So it's very good, a lot of fun. Whether you're a Corvette enthusiast, a sports car collector, or a U.S. veteran, be sure to mark your calendar for next year's Vets for Vets event. So next Memorial Day weekend, we'll find you. Right here. Yep, all good Lord willing, I'll be here. Even if you're not a huge thrill seeker, being part of this would be so much fun for you. There's nothing that compares to riding through that first turn at Talladega. And they do this every Memorial Day weekend, but this year they're having a salute to Veterans Ball. That's right. They're doing another fundraiser November 8th, right before Veterans Day. And you can find all the details at the website vets4, that's the number 4, vets.org. Up next on Simply Southern, tractor enthusiasts from across the country meet in Alabama, not for the new high-tech farm equipment, but to see the stuff that built agriculture into what it is today. One out of four Alabama residents have benefited from the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Last year, Master Gardener Managed Gardens donated $150,000 worth of fruits and vegetables to food banks and over 25,000 young people developed math, science, technology, and engineering skills through 4-H. Now what we want to know is, how can we help you? Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we 
grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. Seriously? Have some respect. Pick it up, man. Did you just litter? Take pride in your school. Pick it up, man. Clean it up, dude. Besides keeping your campus clean, adopt a Maya with Roadside Cleanup. Attend the next Coastal Cleanup Day or pitch in on the annual Spring Cleanup Campaign. Make a difference by picking up litter and... Don't jump it on Alabama! Being a catfish farmer to me means carrying on a legacy that my father started about 35 years ago. It's a good way to take care of the land and provide a nutritious product for people all over the world. My name is Mary Quitman Holmes. My sister, my father, and I own this farm, Lawson Catfish Farm, in Perry County, Alabama. So who makes the best trucks, Ford or Chevy? Well, if you think that debate is tough, you should hear folks argue about green versus red farm equipment. It's that dedication that brought thousands of people from across the country to Alabama earlier this year for the Red Power Roundup. Our own Kevin Worthington was one of them. Earlier this summer, downtown Montgomery streets were flooded with a river of red. Spectators lining historic Dexter Avenue enjoyed a parade of vintage tractors of all shapes and sizes as the nation's largest showcase of international harvester equipment came to Alabama. Red Power Roundup is an annual gathering. This is the largest showcase of international harvester products in the world. It's the largest single brand tractor show in the world. Now what's interesting, this is as far south as it has ever been. It's never been held in the state of Alabama and it's never been held this far south. So, so many people have not heard of it or don't know about it, but it's been going on for 29 years, primarily in all the northern, you know, in the corn belt and the wheat belt and that kind of stuff. Visitors from every corner of the map poured into Garrett Coliseum for four days filled with this classic American brand. Yeah, I do like international better because I guess I was raised on one and dad had put me on the rake and I'd be on that rake all summer long until the snow flat flew in the winter. The most important thing about these events it is celebrating agriculture heritage and preserving agriculture history. You'll hear story after story after story that that Cub Farm Isle was my great granddaddy's. That was the first tractor that I ever drove or I remember sitting on the knee of my granddaddy when he plowed the garden with that tractor. So they've got an emotional attachment to that tractor or that piece of equipment. And they've restored it and they've spent labor of love and spent hours doing restoration. So the general public can certainly appreciate the fine work of art. While these engines of agriculture are clearly the main event, bringing Red Power Roundup to the Deep South also presented a different landscape for visiting farmers. We just saw this cotton picking. We have no idea up there what this is all about because we just don't see it. Or we don't see the cotton pickers either. Well, all the folks in Minnesota and Pennsylvania and New York and Iowa and Ohio and Nebraska and all across the corn in the wheat belt, they've never experienced cotton. They've never, a lot of these have never seen cotton growing. So it just was a natural fit for us because we had something that no other chapter could offer up, and that's cotton. Pickers, planters, combines, and good old tractors come in many colors and many brands. While Red Power Roundup recognizes the international harvester legacy, the goal of the event is to shine a light on those behind the wheel of these big red machines. What's happening in today's society is that you've got so many that are so removed from the farm so we just think it's a wonderful opportunity for them to come out and experience agriculture, heritage, and history, and to be able to see, touch. All children love tractors. So we want them to experience it, and we want them to come and enjoy and have a good time. And, and, uh, and of course, the big kids, you know, the 60, 70, 80-year-olds, 
they love tractors as well. Somebody says, do you fish? And I said, no, I don't, because I'm not gonna sit in the water on a boat waiting for a fish to jump on my hook. I'd rather be on a tractor with a two-bottom plow all afternoon than sitting on a lake fishing. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. This was the first time Red Power Roundup was held in Alabama and the farthest south that it's ever been held. And if you think 1,100 miles is a long way to travel for the event, organizers say there were people there from seven different countries, including Sweden, New Zealand, and Australia. Crikey, that is a long way. Up next on Simply Southern, Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants will show you how to maximize space so that you can grow your own vegetables and herbs, no matter how little space you have to work with. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. What we eat, what we wear, it all starts somewhere. And if it's good, it usually starts with a farmer. And that somewhere is right here in Alabama. In a field, in a barn, on a tractor. Right now, there's a farmer starting something good for all of us. And it all starts right here in Alabama. FFA makes a positive difference in the lives of students by developing their potential for premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. We're strengthening American agriculture and providing our members with the skills needed to build healthy local communities, a strong nation, and a sustainable world. We are the next generation of agriculture. It's our turn now. Let's show the world what we can achieve together. We, we are FFA. FFA. For more Simply Southern, be sure to follow us on social media. And while you're online, visit our website, simplysoutherntv.net. Simply Southern will continue in a moment. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is, it's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center, Bonnie Plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sidney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants and I want to talk to you today about a unique style of gardening that's been around for years but is becoming popular now because of hobby trends like Pinterest. And it's called square foot gardening. It's a way that you can take a small area and use a lot of varieties and have a good mixture of different plants. So what we're doing here today is we're developing a basically a pollinator garden. So it's going to be something that attracts butterflies, birds, uh, all the way into bees even. So what I'm using is uh, some flowers as well as some herbs that are really well known for butterflies and birds as well. So what we've got here is we've got red salvia, we've got some dwarf marigolds, pineapple sage, flat Italian parsley that we're mixing in. So we're counteracting the color. I've got red on opposite corners of each other and then I've got the marigolds with the orange and red to the other opposite corners. In the center, we're doing pineapple sage and flat parsley. So what's gonna happen here is these two items are gonna grow up, they're gonna mound around the flowers. So you'll have nice green with some red blooms mixed in with the parsley, and then you're gonna have good color around the edges. A lot of different ways that you can do this. So if you wanna try a square foot garden out, there's some rules and regulations that you have to follow. First off, tomatoes are not going to work. Tomatoes need at least four square feet to grow. Now, we've got 16 square feet here, so we can plant 16 different items, but if we were to plant a tomato, we'd have to put it over to the side. It would grow, but it's not gonna be as successful as you want it to. So for this style garden, we don't wanna do that. Tomatoes, like I always recommend, put them in a single container by themselves. They'll be able to grow. You can easily cage them. You won't have to worry about anything. When you're dealing with the square foot gardens, when you start off your early season, you can do a mixture of lettuce, broccoli, all the way into your spinaches, arugulas, and it's a cool way to mix and match, and you can mix match the colors throughout the bed. So, 
First rule of thumb is how many plants do you put per square foot? Now, when you see the pixie tags that are in all of the products, it gives you a ton of examples. You wanna put two square feet or 12 to 14 inches or 24 inches between products. Everything kinda of goes out the window. You don't follow those rules when it comes to this. So what we're doing here is we've got our flowers and I'm putting four flowers per square foot. When it gets into the herbs, like our pineapple sage here, when I remove the pineapple sage, I've got a big root mass here that is gonna displace a lot of soil. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put two. And what I'm doing is I'm putting on one corner of the bed, I'm gonna put a pineapple sage, and then I'm gonna put another one on the opposite corner. The same thing I've done with the parsley. That will keep balance. Now, if you wanted to run color all the way around, that's easily done. But for this, we're just basically gonna go color around the edges, herbs in the center, and it's gonna be really attractive to have on the back patio. But like we said earlier, early spring season lettuces, you can mix and match how you lay them out. Uh, when you're dealing with broccoli, you wanna put one per square foot. Same thing with collards. When you get into your lettuce greens, two to four. And when you get into spinaches or arugulas, you can tighten those up. Even leaf lettuces, you can tighten up with four to six per square foot. If you're doing beets or radishes, you can mix those in. Now, as you get later into the season, you can transfer this same kind of concept into herbs. So you can do thymes and oreganos around the edges and let them drape. You can do basils in the center. You can offset green basil with purple basil and you can go fun with it and add a little bit of color to your back patio. Now, if you wanna learn how to do a square foot garden in your backyard, go to bonnieplants.com. We've got a great article that shows you the history of square foot gardening and the ways that you can use this in your backyard. So, like I said, this is a great, fun way to even get your kids involved. Try it out. Go to bonnieplants.com or the app, Homegrown with Bonnie Plants, and let's see what square foot gardening can do in your backyard. BonniePlants.com has many other ideas available for growing in small spaces. If you'd like to ask Sydney a question about your garden, just drop him an email at simplysouthern at alafarm.com and he may answer it on an upcoming show. Thanks for watching Simply Southern today, but we're out of time. I hope you'll be back with us again next week when we'll visit the longest continuously operating restaurant in Alabama. And we'll meet a man who has his priorities for life figured out. Faith family, and farming. And that's all day, every day. Thanks for watching Simply Southern today. I'm Mary John. And I'm Jim Allen. We'll see you again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.